As I record this, it's January 30th, 2011. It's roughly six days after Iowa football players began being admitted to University of Iowa hospitals, feeling some uh, bad effects following a workout and who knows what else. Six days afterwards, all 13 now have been released and are going home healthy enough to be released from the hospital. Now here's, here's the situation, at least as, as I see it right now. Uh, obviously it's great that these student athletes are being released, that they're healthy enough to be released, that they can leave the hospital care, they can go on. Looks like everybody's going to have a full recovery. This is all coming from a University of Iowa press release where Kirk Ferentz, head coach Kirk Ferentz, and athletics director Gary Barta have been quoted in this. The big thing for me, and I wrote a story over the weekend, uh, you can see that linked right down below here. The story that I wrote basically stuck up for, stood up for Kirk Ferentz. I, um, I got to the point reading uh, the Pat Forty's article on ESPN on Friday. It, it ticked me off. It really, really frustrated me. I mean, I don't know Kirk Ferentz personally. Well, I guess I know him somewhat personally. I've been in situations with him before, in green rooms before, had dinner with him before at a public function, never had dinner at his house. Uh, you know, I've only talked to him on the phone a few times, and that's just been for business-related things with either my website or my magazine, things of that nature. So I wouldn't consider Kirk a friend uh, in the uh, true sense of the word that we're people that spend a lot of time together. But I will say this. He's always been honorable with his dealings with me. He's been incredibly honorable with his dealings with people away from the spotlight. And to me, a measure of a man is how he reacts to adversity. It's also how he reacts when no one's looking, when the cameras are away, when there isn't a built-in photo op. There's a lot of uh, disingenuous people in this world that basically look nice while the camera's rolling and afterwards, you know, get away from me, scram. Kirk Ferentz is a person that I know of countless Countless stories that have been relayed to me from Iowa fans over the course of the last 11, 12 years that I've been doing this, where Kirk Ferentz has reached out to them, has impacted either their lives, the lives of a family member when they've needed it, people that have passed away, and Kirk Ferentz has lifted the remaining family member's spirits over and over and over. Kirk getting in his own car, driving over to Des Moines, or other far reaches of the state of Iowa on his own time by himself, come in and speak for a charity function, nothing uh, announced uh, in advance of it, no fanfare, come in, speak, meet people, talk to them, and then go back home and never be a photo op and never be any uh, you know, publicity for it. Because Kirk does it the right way. I mean, the good book tells you, don't stand on the corner like a Pharisee and say, look at my good works, look at all the good I do. It doesn't work like that. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, and the Lord certainly loves people that go out and, and impact the community and do so in a way that they're not looking for the attention for themselves. And in my experience, and based upon what I know and the position that I've been able to hold with regards to having contact with a lot of Iowa fans over the years, Kirk Ferentz just gives and gives and gives. And all of a sudden, a Pat Forty of ESPN is going to come out and try and paint Kirk Ferentz as some type of uh, you know piece of dog done on the bottom of your shoe that you scrape off, that type of person that doesn't care about his kids, that's BS and I have no problem saying so. I had no problem writing what I wrote because as far as I'm concerned, until Kirk Ferentz or Chris Doyle or people in the Iowa Athletic Department prove to not be who they have been for over a decade, I'm going to take their side or at least rather give them the benefit of the doubt before I believe someone like Pat Forty who I'm guessing has been in Iowa City a total of maybe five times maybe in his life uh, as, as a professional working for ESPN if even that. Again the great news right now that we get to talk about uh, is that all the players are home. Now as Kirk Ferentz has said in his statement, as Gary Barta has said in his statement, you go and figure out what was the cause that sent 13 players to the hospital following a workout that Iowa players have been doing for a number of years. I talked to several former Iowa football players last week, players that say they did the exact same drill that the current players did just this past week. Some of the people I spoke with have spoken to some of the players that did the drill. They said it was the exact same drill they did. More than 50, 60 players that are presently on the team, did this drill, did this workout, and didn't have any ill effects. 13 did. Iowa is trying to find out why. Why did these 13 have the reaction that they did? And there are a lot of spe there's a lot of speculation, obviously. A lot of guesses going on. There's some pretty good guesses as well. 
I'll save that for another day. Actually, I'm preferring to save it for when there are actual facts to discuss, a novel idea. I know it's just the kind of way I'm trying to operate and why I got ticked off uh, at the Pat 40s of the world. People that wanted to go out there and, and paint a picture like these fo some of these football players were on their deathbed, like some of these football players were knocking on death's door, and there are some people out there in the media that were painting that, painting that picture or trying to come close to it, giving teases, uh, going in and out of breaks, making it sound like you know these guys are, are, are close to seeing the reap. That was, that was reckless then. It's reckless in hindsight, and it's flat out stupid in hindsight, especially when you're going with unnamed, unsighted sources, ends up usually more often than not coming back to make you look foolish. Certainly at least with what I've observed in the last several uh, months uh, and weeks related to Iowa football. What was it, just uh, less than two months ago we had 20 some players that failed drug tests, the whole football program's gonna blow up, Ferentz gonna get run. Uh, sorry, it was one guy that was arrested. Now another player was subsequently arrested three weeks later for an incident that happened three weeks later. I'll grant anybody this, however, anybody this, and I was critical of Iowa last week on this front, still am today. The public relations aspects related to this story, as it comes from the Iowa Athletic Department, were poor. If you want to use the word failure, you can, and it would be an easy case to argue. Not having, not waiting one more day, not waiting three more hours for uh, Kirk Ferentz to be at the press conference last week and have one of the lowest ranking members of the football program out there as the face and voice piece, uh, mouthpiece for the program. Maybe, that's a, maybe that was legal advice. Could be. Could turn out that Iowa didn't want to send the people out there because of potential legalities. I don't know. Can't tell you for sure. I don't think Kirk Ferentz could have said anything more than was said because of HIPAA rules and regulations. But I know that it looked bad. And, you know, sometimes the court of public opinion, as it relates to this, it does matter. It would have taken some arrows out of the quiver of some of the national media members to be able to say Kirk Ferentz doesn't care about his players, where's Kirk Ferentz? It helps minimize the collateral damage that came from this nationally that looks like, is good, that looks like it's going to be some time misspent, at least you know, with, with regards to the players, all of them being home, which everybody is certainly happy about. I could go on and on and on about this. Probably should do a podcast where I can roll for about a half hour and not have to worry about a video uploading for two hours to take it. But I'm probably going to back away from this right now. Best case or best thing is these players are home from the hospital. All the fear mongering that took place in the media last week. I mean, I, I guess what was true Friday could not be true today. I guess the players have gained 30 to 40 to 60 pounds. Listen, I'm sure the players did gain some weight because of fluids. But again, you have people painting a picture like this is like an Oompa Loompa type situation or Augustus Gloop after he went through uh, eating the chocolate or Violet Blue after she blew up uh, like a blueberry, something like that, had to go down to the de-juicer. It's just not the case. There was a lot of Molotov cocktails being thrown last week and a lot of Zippo lighters hanging under the bottom of it, a little Molotov media going on. And in my opinion, those people look flat stupid right now.